Good morning and welcome to the Paul Green Comedy Podcast. It is May 5th, 2024. This is episode 158 of the Paul Green Comedy Podcast. This is a podcast by a dreamer. For all you dreamers out there, stand-up comedian and actor Paul Green here documenting my journey as I rise to glory. Or something else. Uh, so, let's see. Um, last night... I had an opportunity to do two more shows at JP's Comedy Club. I tried um, not only the newer material that I've been just starting to present, I also tried some brand new material that I actually wrote yesterday. And it all went well. And I ended up doing about, in the second show, I ended up doing about 13 minutes of all new material. And I did a pretty good job staying on script. I, I mean, I interacted with the audience a little bit. So there was a little, a little bit of going off script, which I still have a tendency to do too much, at least for where I want to get. I want to get to where I'm just doing the jokes and I'm not constantly trying to call out every audience response or whatever. So I, I've I've got a little ways to go to work out that crutch in my standup, but I'm I'm just gonna be very honest. It felt so good. These weekend shows felt really really good, and it has been a long time. It has been a really really long time since I have gone on stage with material that I felt good about and that I liked and that I thought was funny and then to have it really land have it really connect have it feel very authentic and um and now I've got about I got about 15 minutes of my of my new act and I've still got a lot of work to do my goal is to have a new hour I wonder what I should set set that goal for when I'm going to have that new hour. I mean, I don't want to overdo it because, so I've got about 15 minutes of new material. And I mean, you could say I've done that in the last month. It's probably more realistically the last three or four months that I've really been trying to find a new act and find new material. So if I can keep up with this, then hopefully I will be able to, uh, you know, keep building on this and and get a new really tight, solid hour of stand-up that is all in this new format that I'm trying to write in that is all organic, that is uh, feels authentic to me, and that I feel like I can show up to uh, any comedy club and perform it and do well. Now, obviously, there's always going to be crowds who are less into you, but I'll tell you what, everybody, overall, I'm I'm actually feeling really good. And I know that that is probably not very common on the Paul Green Comedy Podcast. For about the last three months, all I've been doing is talking about how I'm not happy (laughs) with my material, and I don't like anything, and I'm not funny, and blah, 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 but now, I have not watched the tape yet, um, which is always telling because when you watch the tape, that's when you can really, if you're watching, you can really start to see some flaws, where things could have hit better, where they didn't hit. So I am committed to doing that, though. I'm committed to this process. I am just so thrilled that after all this work, after um, my buddy Andrew agreed to mentor me and was willing to pretty much tell me that everything I was, almost every joke I was doing or every bit or every routine I was doing was just not right. Uh, Right isn't the correct word. Um, How I was approaching comedy was not the most effective approach to doing stand-up that would serve me long-term. That's kind of how he worded it, of just, yeah, you can do this other stuff, but 
uh, in terms of long term and really building a solid set, you want to start writing in this certain vein in this, you know, you got to find this lane and you got to stay in it. And that, you know, that was not easy. That was not easy. I had so much material that I've been doing over the years that, um, you know, was good. I, I was building a career. I was getting booked. I was doing shows. People liked my stand up. And so it's not like my stand up was bad, but I definitely knew that there was something missing that I just was not, just couldn't put my finger on it. And then my buddy Andrew, who's one of the most solid, hilarious, stand-up comedian successful um in terms of the the uh, milestones that he was able to hit in his career that that like associates with me i mean i know a couple comedians who are are kind of famous and who you know if i saw them they would say hi to me but you know we're not on a let's talk and let's support each other type relationship you know they aren't watching my comedy and helping me along, you know, they just know who I am and, oh, hey, how's it going? Um, I have a couple friends from LA who are blowing up right now. Um, but again, I'm not, when I say friends, I'm not, you know, if I call them right now, they wouldn't answer. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So anyway, but Andrew to me is the most successful comic who's had the the biggest milestones, who has a close relationship with me. We talk on the phone three, four times a week. And he is very invested and interested in helping me out and helping me to understand how I can become successful. And I'm so grateful for that. And that he was able to listen to my stand-up comedy and just go, this is okay, but if you want to get to where you say you want to get, you're going to have to scrap most of this. And I kind of remember that first conversation and, 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 and he was a little hesitant because, you know, comics have egos. Well, everybody has egos. Nobody likes to be told that their art or what they created is not good or isn't going to work. Um, but he just said, Hey man, if we're going to do this, um, I don't, I, I can't have you fighting me. You know, I don't want to get into arguments. And I just said, dude, Andrew, Tell me what to do, and I will do it. Tell me what jokes are going to work, and I'll do them. Tell me what jokes to cut, and I'll cut them. And I shot a, a one-hour comedy special back in November, which I was very proud of. But um, I had him watch that. And we got about 20 minutes in, 20, 25 minutes into that um into that routine that I did. And I think there was one bit, about a three minute bit out of that 20, 25 minutes that he said, uh, this bit right here, you're on the right track. Everything else was that. No, just, this isn't the right approach. And if I'm being honest in my heart of hearts, I knew it wasn't the right approach. I knew there was something off. Again, I didn't know what it was. I didn't know how to admit it to myself. I didn't know how to pinpoint it, but it was this feeling. And I don't want to get into spirituality. I don't want to get into intuition. Other than just to say, I have been doing comedy long enough that I know that when I'm on stage... And when I'm connected to what I'm doing, that it just feels a certain way. And when I used to do improv all the time, I would feel that connection all the time when I would do improv. When I would do stand-up, I almost never felt it. Stand-up felt so different to me, and not in a good way. It just felt, and I don't mean stand-up in general, I mean me doing stand-up. When I was on the stage doing stand-up, 
it just there there was just this friction and I couldn't explain it. There was just this sort of knot in my chest that was just saying, this ain't it. And I performed stand-up with that knot in my chest for 10 years. The only time that knot would go away is when I was riffing with the audience. And then I'd go back to my material material and the knot would kind of kick in. And knot is maybe even too strong of a word. It was just this just this feeling in, in my chest where I knew that I was doing was not right. And I don't mean right in a moral sense. I don't mean right as in it, you shouldn't steal candy from babies. I mean, it just wasn't, just wasn't it. And I spent years trying to figure that out, not with a super amount of effort, because a year after I started doing stand-up, I moved to L.A. And then when I was in L.A., I had no idea what the heck I was doing. I was all over the place. I was doing improv. I was playing piano. I was taking acting classes. I was doing student film. I was still working full-time. I would do stand-up, but... I struggled to do stand up and the reason I struggled to do stand up was because the because the friction in my chest it didn't feel good. It never felt good. When I would do stand up and I would want to quit all the time because of it and I would. And sometimes I would go like months with doing a show or two. I mean, I would still get a thing here, a thing there. You know, sometimes I would drag myself out to an open mic, but it was all very chore based. It was all sort of almost um dutiful obedience of, well, if I'm a stand-up comedian, I better go do an open mic. But I never wanted to. It was never fun. I I just, I man. And again, there's probably going to, pro- well, not again, there's probably going to be people who hear that and go, oh, Paul, you're just saying that. I'm going, no, I'm not just saying that. I've just never really said it before because I was never really honest with myself. And, um, but it made it really hard for me to want to do stand up. And as I mentioned, I, I would quit all the time. It's going, yeah, st- stand up's not for me. It's just, I'm, it just doesn't, it's not coming natural to me. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel right. Uh, you know, not to mention, I'm surrounded in LA by just this endless, vast sea of talented comedians who are funnier, more ambitious, more creative, more interested, interesting, younger more resourceful, more connected. I'm just going, well, yeah, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be able to, I'm not, I'm not figuring this out. And so in LA, when I was in LA in 20, so I moved out in 20 there in 2015 and in 2016 and 2017 and 2018, I maybe did 30 to 50 sets a year. I mean, a couple times a month I was doing it. Which, by the way, if you think that's enough, it's not enough to be good at stand-up. To be good at stand-up, you got to be doing 300 sets a year minimum, probably. Almost daily. Which, how could it be any other way? Name any skill set that you can get really good at if you don't do it almost daily, if not daily. Any skill set. So there was also this cognitive dissonance uh, where where I'm I feel I felt like I was lying to myself. I'm going, you keep calling yourself a stand up, you're branding yourself as a stand up, but you're only doing this thing fifty, maybe a hundred sets a year between 2015 and 2018. I think 2018 I, I did a little bit more. And again, never felt right, never felt good, I never felt funny. I was taking stand-up comedy classes, trying to see if any teacher had the answer for me. None of them did. They they were great. I had good teachers. You know, maybe they would give me a good punchline here or there. I had a good teacher who showed me a lot about um, on-stage persona, which was very helpful. But even with that persona, that per, uh, him helping me discover that persona 
helped me a little bit. It, it started to, to get me some more opportunities and I got into some festivals and stuff. But what I was saying still didn't feel like, the, like I was doing it right. And then 2019, I finally made this decision. I went, okay, if I'm going to do stand-up, it deserves to be done well. And it's an art form that deserves to be taken seriously. Um, so I'm going to stop focusing on doing all of these random acting gigs and doing all of these non-union indie films and all of these student films. And I'm just going to go all in on stand-up. And I set a goal that I would do a minimum of one stand-up set a day or seven a week. And um, for the year 2019, I think I got almost 400 sets in between open mics and other shows. And... I got a lot better, but it still didn't feel right. Felt closer to right. There was still something missing. And again, I was going to comedy festivals. I was doing okay. I never won, though. I was never the clear, funniest person. And I knew it. I would just go to these comedy festivals. I would do my set. They would go how they would go. And I would just go, oh, yeah, and then I would see these other comics go up by going, oh, yeah, no, that person clearly, clearly outshined me. And I wouldn't win or I wouldn't advance. And part of me was going, well, why not? You know, other than the just fact that I knew deep down that I wasn't quite there yet. And of course, 2020 hits. Um, oh, in 2020, I had set a goal to do uh, 10 sets a week. So I wanted to see if I could get almost 500 sets I think I said it yeah so what's that 10 a week so 52 weeks so 520 I think I set a goal for 500 sets because I had 400 the year before and I'm going all right let's see if I can get 500 in and I was well on my way for those first two months and then of course pandemic hit and that really threw me off my game by 2021 things kind of started circling back around. I started to kind of pick up some shows here and there. I started doing some Zoom shows, not near the intensity that I was doing in 2019 and the start of 2020. Um, I probably did maybe 30 sets in 2021. Uh, in 2022, I ended up getting in a relationship, moving back to Arizona. I didn't, I, and then my whole life plan was just completely in shambles. I didn't know what the heck I was doing. And I sure as heck was not doing a bunch of stand-up routines. Um, I didn't have uh, any material. I, I didn't know what I was doing um, in terms of comedy. I mean, I, I again, I'm, and I was still getting gigs. That's what's so funny. I look back and I'm going, how did I do all of these gigs? Uh, you know, a lot of time I would just do old material that always kind of seemed to work okay didn't feel right, but it would work. It's what I'd always done. 2023 comes along. I start writing new material and started performing that material. And it went, okay, it was good. Still didn't feel right. I did that one hour show down in Tucson where I presented a lot of that new material as well as pulling in some older material. And I felt really good about that show until my buddy Andrew looked at it and pointed out that everything that I was doing, almost everything, was just not in the right vein, not in the right lane. And it's, again, something I always knew intuitively, but I just didn't know why. And then he started to instruct me and point out how to write. And... uh I made a decision about a month ago that I was going to scrap all my old material. I was going to start over. If I was going to do a show, I was just going to riff and improvise um, until I started to have new material. And then last night and the night before, I finally started to present the new material that I've been working on. And I'm not trying to be overly dramatic here, but it felt so good it felt right not only was I doing stand-up 
And not only was I doing material, but the material felt the same way that I used to feel when I would do improv all the time. Just that connection, that knot in my chest just wasn't there. I was just totally free and connected to the material, authentic to the material, and... This was a good weekend for me, everybody. And thanks to Jim, uh, one of my many, many three fans. And because uh, he actually hooked me up with the shows. I actually wasn't on the calendar this weekend. Um, he had somebody drop out and texted me first, which meant a lot. Because uh, otherwise I wouldn't have been doing anything this uh, weekend. And it gave me a chance to really hone in on this new material and... I'll tell you, I just put my heart into trying out these new bits um, about two or three hours before each show. So I did Friday and Saturday. I would go to a restaurant. I had my notebook and I started writing out long form all of the material that I've been thinking about and really trying to picture it in my head. What is this going to look like? What is this going to feel like? And then I went to the club and then... For about an hour or so before I was going to go on stage, I just walked around the parking lot of the club with my notebook, just rehearsing the bits and just really trying to feel them and um, get connected to them so that by the time I went on stage, I wasn't thinking about what I was going to say. I knew what I was going to say. I knew how I wanted it to feel. I knew what my opinions were. I knew what my act outs were. I knew what my tags were. And then it was just up to me to really um, let go and have fun with the material and be present with it and see what happens. And oh my gosh, everybody. Oh my gosh. I cannot tell you how good it felt to just be like, oh my gosh, I actually have material that feels good to me. It, oh. I remember back in 2015... I moved to L.A. and I got involved with this kind of small comedy venue. And the owner of it taught comedy classes. His name was Aaron. And I remember Aaron just telling this um, comedy teacher, just going, I, I do not like any of my material. And I'd only been, again, doing stand-up for about a year or two. But even back then, I'm going... Something is just that I just don't like what I'm doing and I don't know how to not not like it. And he just said, well, if you don't like your material, you, you got to come to my class. But he didn't he didn't have the answer either. But that's just to demonstrate for the last eight, nine, ten years of doing stand up that uh, even back then, I just wouldn't just something was off with stand up. So to have my buddy Andrew be able to really understand what it was that was off and to be able to articulate it to me and for him to care enough to articulate it to me because we all know sometimes it's hard to tell somebody that they're doing something wrong or that they could be doing it better or we don't like their relationship or we don't think this job works for them. <laughs> you know, it's hard to do that. And and he did that and helped me. And I'll tell you, for the first time in years and years and years and years, maybe for the first time ever, I felt so good about the stand-up material that I did. And now I'm just going, heck yeah, let's double down and let's see what is next. So everybody, good update today for May 5th, 2024, episode 158 of the Paul Green Comedy Podcast. I hope all of your dreams are going well, you're pushing through, and that maybe uh, you're having some some good days uh, in your journey as well. So I am going to leave it off there. I hope you're all doing well, and I love you so much, and I will talk to you tomorrow.